Council, I just want to remind you that the um, Asian celebration is this weekend and hope that everybody can find some time to spend there. And the other thing I wanted to remind you of is that the, um, just because it's so timely, I didn't want to let it go by, is that the uh, Four Day School Board is uh, deliberating or beginning their deliberation on, uh, seriously, on uh, Civic Stadium. So if you all are of the mind to have any Thing to say about that or have any information about that then I think it's you it's uh, it's time to for you to consider what you want to do to move forward Councilor Clark just something you want to say we, yeah I would love to have from manager a memo up or from city attorney perhaps on any any sort of considerations we should bear in mind if we were to consider testifying there um, with what may or may not come before us with any of the the discussion so far from the school board. But that's tomorrow, isn't it? I know it's short notice. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. I know that's short notice, <laughs> but a quick heads up on what would or wouldn't be a good idea to do would be appreciated. Okay. With that, um, I'm going. To, the first uh, public hearing item is uh, and possible action is that an ordinance adopting hazardous substance user fees for the fiscal year commencing July 1st, 2010. City Manager. Actually, Mary, you said exactly what I was going to say, so okay. I won't repeat it. Well, then, I've, it's been said. Did we have anyone? Do we have anyone signed up for that one? So I open the hearing. There's no one here to speak. I close the hear. That's true, Chris. There's no one here for this one, huh? That's true. Chris. Okay. All right. I'm going to close it, and um, then I'm going to ask uh, council if they are ready to move on this particular um, issue tonight. Anybody object? I think you've got an objection we have an objection? I don't see any. No objection? Do you want to put a motion on the table? I was just waiting there. I thought I saw that. I move that the City Council adopt Council Bill 5022, an ordinance adopting hazardous substance user fees for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2010. Second. Moved and seconded. Would you please vote? Mayor. Oh, does there. Oops. Councilor Polling. I have one real quick question, and that is um, they've got the numbers down here in, in uh, the FTEs and the, the dollar amount increase. Could somebody ballpark figure give me what percentage increase that is and how it relates to other fees in increases that the city is charges? Oh, boy. Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilor Polling, percentage increase $55 versus 52, 6%. Uh, and I do not know how that compares to any increase or decrease in other city fees. Uh, but this fee is derived uh, not by some set formula of inflation, but by uh, virtue of those FTEs, et cetera, that you mentioned. I, I was aware that that's how the fees are charged. I just was kind of trying to get a ballpark figure of how it compares to other, other fees throughout the city. You, do you have any you idea, know, Mr. City Council Manager? Portland, I don't have that in front of me right now, but we'd be happy to get back in touch with you. Okay. Thank you. That's that's all right. Okay. okay. Any other questions? All right. Would you please vote on that one? Five in favor and two in opposition. It passes. Thank you all. Then we will head on to the second hearing, and that is an ordinance to redesignate and rezone South Willamette properties. And um, those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form to the information desk. Um, do any counselors need to disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts? Um, is that the must room? This is a South, the agenda in front of me. South Willamette. Um, yep. To rezone South Willamette properties for general office use. Okay. I, no one has said that they have any uh, conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts. City Manager, would you please introduce the topic? I will, Mayor. This item is a public hearing on a request for a <coughs> Metro Plan Amendment, Refinement Plan Amendment, and a zone change to change the designation and zoning of a property owned by South Willamette LLC from high density residential to general office. The property is a half acre site located on Willamette Street in 24th place. The site is fully developed with a medical health facility. 
The applicant is requesting this change to a general office zone in order to allow a wider range of office uses that can utilize the existing commercial building. After the council pack packet went out for this item, a letter of public testimony was received from Mr. Matt Sprick, dated February 9th, 2010, and that letter has been distributed tonight to the City Council. Thank you. Testimony presented must be directed toward the approved criteria or other criteria the speaker believes to apply to the decision. The applicable approved criteria are from Eugene Code Section 9.77303, Section 9.8424, and Section 9.8865. The failure of anyone to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the City Council and parties an opportunity to respond will preclude appeal on that issue. The failure to raise constitutional or other issues relating to the proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the Council to respond to the issues precludes an action for damages in Circuit Court. The request to speak forms, there are actually only three. So I don't actually think I need to, uh, and they don't indicate whether they're pro or anti, so I'm just going to call them in the order that they've been um, received this evening. So um, let's see. Um, please give your name and address when you come to the podium to speak. You have three minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate the time you have to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light indicates the end of three minutes. I'm now going to open the public hearing. And I have first up is Rick Sorek, followed by Justin Schmick. Hello, I'm Rick Sorek. I'm the owner of 2440 South Willamette. And I've put, written down some statements here that I'm going to read off of real quickly, and then I'll get out of your way. I bought the building with the Anderson family in 2006 for a retirement investment. So much for all of our investments. Anyway, in 2007, the Anderson family and myself invested over $600,000 out of pocket for a renovation of the exterior. The building had never been through a renovation before that time since it was built in 1963. In 2008, the Anderson family suffered several financial issues, including several vacancies throughout their real estate portfolio, including our building. In lieu of being foreclosed on, I accepted the responsibility of sole ownership and assumed our $1.3 million loan with Liberty Bank on that building. The reason for our vacancy was that with Peace Health moving to the Gateway area, several of the medical businesses had also relocated out in that area as well. Um, our building was zoned R3 at that time, which is, which is high dens density residential, but has never been used in that capacity but has always been used as a non-conforming medical, non medical use. It was never our intentions to change the zoning from R3, but with our vacancy and having to turn away several prospective tenants, we had no choice but to look towards some alternative measures. We noticed that at 24, uh, 2440 Willamette was at the north end of the um, commercial corridor. At the south end of the commercial corridor is the Market of Choice building at 29th and Willamette. Mm -hmm. We thought it would be a really nice blend at that point in time, having the C2 zoning, which ended right at our property, and our property started at the R3 zoning, to do some type of really nice merger with um, some type of zoning that was in between that might work for everybody. We came up with a solution of a general office type of zoning. Now, with that zoning, we're hoping, no promises, we're hoping that's going to solve some of our possible problems that we've had with the vacancies in that area. The vacancies in that area, several other people are suffering vacancies as well, but if we can fulfill our obligation of getting those vacancies filled, we have more foot traffic filling other vacancies and we're getting the crime rate as far as petty crime, um, graffiti, that kind of stuff that's taken place as well, hopefully under control. Um, we've spent, like I said, over $600,000 in renovating the exterior of that building. It looks really nice. It basically bookends that Willamette Street corridor with Willamette Street, 29th and Willamette being renovated, our building being renovated. Our building's been used as um, a commercial building, never residential. And so that's why we're looking at changing the zoning at this point in time. Thank you. 
Next is Justin Schnick, followed by Carl Mueller. Uh, Justin Schmick, 1600 Oak Street. Uh, I've uh, prepared a letter to be distributed to you, and I'll read from that letter today. <clears throat> Dear ladies and gentlemen of the council, I represent the applicant, South Willamette Professional Building, LLC, as their leasing broker, and was asked to share my experience in working with the subject property. I'm writing you today to talk about the change of circumstances that warrant amending the refinement plan and why I think adjusting the metro plan and changing the zoning to GEO makes sense. Uh, Section 2E of Eugene City Code 9.8424, which is a refinement plan amendment approval criteria, uh, change of circumstances, the basis of one out of two criteria for approving a refinement plan amendment. I understand there are multiple changes of circumstances that the Eugene Planning Staff and Commission have identified, but I'm only focusing on one. <coughs> In the spring of 2006, the present owner purchased the South Eugene building and then underwent an extensive renovation of the property. The work was material completed in 2007, and the end result was a very attractive building. I've attached some before and after photos uh, for you to look at. During the same time period, the leasing market for medical space in Eugene was adversely affected by Eugene's only hospital moving their primary facility to Springfield. Their move influenced the migration of medical tents from Eugene to Springfield, leaving an unprecedented amount of vacancies. It has been like a black hole as their gravitational pull has sucked medical tents from Eugene to Springfield. <clears throat> as the past president of Eugene's Association of Commercial Brokers, CID, I spent a lot of time speaking with my peers who are actively trying to lease medical space in our community. My experience is not unique as we're all facing similar challenges. <clears throat> When the South Willamette Sub-Area Study, SWS, was adopted as a refinement plan in 1988, the authors could not have anticipated Eugene's only hospital would move their primary facility to Springfield, as this was a shocking turn of events. In addition, they could not have foreseen the effects that Peace Health's new 1.2 million square foot facility and 180 plus acre medical campus would have on occupancy rates of buildings in this district. Uh, in conclusion, Eugene's only hospital moving to Springfield and the impact on medical tenant vacancies in the un is undisputedly substantial matter and could not have been anticipated. Amending the SWS refinement plan as requested will accommodate the change of circumstances while preserving the integrity of the plan as contemplated during its conception. <coughs> and looks like I'm out of time, but there's some more uh, literature there for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the final uh, speaker on this particular hearing is Carl Mueller. Good evening, counselors. Uh, my name is Carl Mueller, agent for the applicant. Um, my address is 370 Q Street in Springfield. Uh, I don't want to necessarily belabor the point that the applications comply with all the relevant approval criteria. I uh, would note that the city planning staff, who is fairly expert in these matters, uh, they confirm the applications comply with the approval criteria, and the planning commission found so as well. As you're, of course, aware, we're requesting a metro plan amendment, a refinement plan amendment, and a zone change, and, and that certainly sounds like, well, what, what else can they ask for under the land use code? Um, but really, when, when you do look at it, really the only discernible effect for a, a resident of the community would be that there potentially some other types of office uses could locate in there, accountants, attorneys, um, those sorts of uses um, in a building that's fully built out as as an office building has been used for offices for quite some time. As as Mr. Sorek noted, the, the uses there are historic and ongoing. The, pro the building was built in 1963, so... Now it's been used for offices for a period of 47 years. After undergoing a uh, $600,000 renovation for further office use, it's likely that it'll have another 20 to 30 years of life as an office. Um, <laughs> so I do think that uh, the 47-year period should pro might be enough to recognize that that is the highest and best use of that site as an office and would request that this body formally recognize that and approve the applicant's request. Um, I do anticipate maybe a couple of things that may be a concern. The idea that 
it's removing land from the the RLS, the residential lands inventory. Um, I would note that uh, this property would not have been considered part of that inventory. That inventory assumed 32 percent was available was not available for development because it's built out already. Um, additionally, uh, so. So from that standpoint, there really won't be an effect on, on the inventory, particularly when you take into account that it is fully built out and has another 20 to 30 years um, as, a, as an office. So I'd say as a policy standpoint, with regard to that residential lands issue, the community is almost ill-served by treating the property as available for residential development when, when that isn't the case. Um, all that said, um, the Eugene Code does provide that residential uses can can still occur in the GO district. So if for some reason that's a higher use or becomes desirable, uh, that's allowable under the code in the general office district. So it should have even less effect than than uh, than I mentioned on the discernible impact. Um, regarding relevant approval criteria, um, Justin actually spoke to the substantial change of circumstances. Um, Anecdotally, our, our office is. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, right now, um, is there a staff response? Here for questions. Okay. Are there any questions council wish to ask of staff? Don't see any. Okay. Then, at this time, we would normally close the public hearing and the public record. Is there any counselor who wishes to hold the record open? written testimony or to continue the hearing to another time okay, I see none so the rec record hearing and um, record are closed okay so now we're on to the next item thank you for that thanks for coming and testifying um, next public hearing is an ordinance to redesignate Lane Memorial Gardens um, those wishing to speak during this public hearing should have already submitted a completed request to speak form. Do any counselors need to disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts? Councilor Clark. Yeah, I just wanted to declare that several members of the Musgrove family are longtime good friends, but we haven't had any ex parte conversations about this application per se, and I'm capable of an unbiased decision on this. Thank you for that. City Attorney, is there any response necessary to that? Okay. Thank you. City Manager, would you please introduce the topic? Thank you, Mayor. The public hearing for Lane Memorial Gardens is for a proposal to amend the Metro Plan and Refinement Plan diagrams to redesignate the southern undeveloped portion of Lane Memorial Gardens Cemetery from parks and open space to low-density residential. Approval of the, of the requests would allow future residential development but does not include a specific development proposal at this time. Thank you, City Manager. All right, so now, um, testimony presented must be directed towards the approval criteria or other criteria that the speaker believes to apply to the decision. The applicable approval criteria from Eugene Code Sections 9.77303 and 9.8865. The failure of anyone to raise an issue accompanied by statements or evidence sufficient to afford the City Council and parties an opportunity to respond will preclude appeal on that issue. The failure to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the council to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in the circuit court. The request to speak forms, we have only two. So um, when you come forward, will you please give your name and address? To, you will have three minutes to comment. The timer and lights on the podium indicate the time you have to speak. A yellow light will come on when you have 15 seconds to complete your comments. The red light, of course, indicates the end of three minutes. So I am now going to open the public hearing. And uh, I have two people. The first is Carol Shermer, and the second is Dan Terrell. Good evening, Councilors and Mayor. My name is Carol Shermer with Shermer & Associates. My address is 375 West 4th, Suite 201 in Eugene. Um, Could you speak a little closer to the microphone, please? Yes. Thanks. Is that better? Okay. 
Um, I'm here tonight with uh, Dan Terrell, who's also signed up to speak. He's a local land use attorney, and he's here to help out and provide clarity on any uh, legal questions that might come up. He knows a little more of the specifics on uh, Goal 5 and Goal 12, which were some of the major concerns as we explored this Metro Plan Amendment. So I'm hoping to keep this presentation fairly brief, as the objective and the, and the findings are fairly clear, and there doesn't seem to be any compelling reason to reiterate the written statement. I think staff and Planning Commission um, thoroughly reviewed and discussed this proposal. So I'm going to be fairly efficient in my remarks and then try to answer any questions that might come up, as will Dan. And I also shall mention Mark Musgrove is here as well, and he knows the property and the cemetery use more intimately than any of us do, so it's good that he's here as well. I think for myself, um, really three questions come up when I think about this proposal for a metro plan amendment and also the zone change to add the site review overlay. Um, the main reason for this application and the first question is why are the clients wanting to do this? And the main reason for the metro plan amendment has its origins in the changing nature of the cemetery business. What was once efficient sufficient land to operate a cemetery business now becomes excess land and a burden to the cemetery owners as a business. Um, in Oregon, and I can't speak about any other states, statistically 60 percent um, of the people are choosing cremation over burial, so the nature of this business has changed. Therefore, less property is required to meet these needs. The applicant's long-term goals are met with the remaining 51 acres that comprise the northern portion of the property, and that portion is predominantly open lawn area, and the property, piece of property proposed for the Metro Plan Amendment is the vegetated area. The ma remainder of the site, the 28.26 acres, is well situated to provide housing for that area's developing employment uses. And why housing? Because that is how the, it is currently zoned. And while this may be a policy choice, the Planning Commission agreed unanimously that this was the right policy choice. The second question would be, what about the traffic impact created by the development? Um, a traffic impact analysis was conducted, and we and ODOT identified some concerns with the capacity of West 11th, which is going to be handled with a trip cap to limit any potential development there um, to a certain amount of trips until the traffic situation is handled in the future, and we don't really know what that is, but the trip cap solves that issue. And the third question is why drop the zone change imposing the site review overlay, and it's because the current land use code adequately protects that uh, visual resource, so the site review overlay is uh, unnecessary. And with that, it looks like I've run out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Terrell, did you have something you wanted to make? Mayor, City Councilors, I'm Dan Terrell with the Law Office of Bill Close. We're at 375 West 4th Street, Suite 204 here in Eugene. Um, I'd just like to thank Carol for covering most of the topics. Um, the one thing I would like to point out is staff's done a great job of working with us and um, working with ODOT to address the Goal 12 issue, the traffic issue. I think we've come up with a very workable solution that works in the short term and also um, is meets our needs and the city's needs in, in the long term and allows us to continue a working relationship. Um, I'm available to answer any questions anyone may have. Otherwise, I'll keep it short and sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a staff response of any kind? I'm available for questions if you have any okay, questions. Thank you. Are there any questions counselors wish to ask of staff? Let's see any. Okay, there are no questions. At this time, we would normally close the public hearing and the public record. Is there any counselor who wishes to hold the record open for written testimony or to continue the hearing to another time? Seeing none. Okay, the record is closed and the hearing is closed. All right, thank you very much for coming. One quick question, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, this public hearing and the last one, they're both set for action on the same day. I think it would be if we could advise people when the council is actually taking action on it. Uh, they're both set for action on March 8th. Thank you. As well as the next two public hearings that we'll be hearing. Today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. The next public hearing is on uh, safe and efficient streets through access management. Do we have anyone here for that? 
All right. Um, do you Mayor, did you want to say anything about that topic? Um, no, Mayor. We do have uh, Peggy Kepler here to make a short presentation. If you'd like that tonight, you might remember during the work session said we'd come back, so we can do that tonight or the night of action, whichever you prefer. What is the wish of the council? Do you want to do it tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. What? She's asking if you want a short presentation on this. Uh, well, I think maybe to explain these handouts. Okay. okay. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, Mayor, Council Members, what I've put together are three different examples on how the code would impact different properties. Now, one of the things I want to keep you in mind is that the new code does not impact any of the existing driveways as they are today. It doesn't mean that after we adopt the code that we go out and do what we're saying here today. They would actually have to submit a land use application or a building permit that would trigger the need for um, this analysis. But what I've done here is just assume that if they came in, they had a land use application, these are the things that we would look at as we looked at this application. So looking at example number A, on this one, the two things, it, well, let's start with the section one of 7.420. That is existing code. There is one portion inside 7.4201 that we've modified a bit. The existing code says that if you have property that's on a corner and you're facing two uh, different classified streets, you are required to take access off the lower classified street. What we heard during our um, previous public hearings and working with the public is that there are certain cases where you have commercial development where it's better for them to actually take the access off of the higher classified street. So we have added that into the new code proposal. So as we look at it, the, um, each application, they do have an opportunity to show that it's still safe and they can place it on the higher classified street. And with the new standards in the code changes, the two new standards that are really different from what we have right now is one, we have this in, influence, it, sorry, intersection influence area, and that's the shaded area. Mm -hmm. This is new, this is um, the area that's protected as you come into an intersection and leave the intersection so that the driver can clearly focus on um, their driving needs, when to um, make their turns, what the signal lights are doing and how people are stopping in front of them. So at this point, the new code will not allow you to do a connection in the intersection influence area. We have a lot of smaller lots in Eugene that are completely encompassed by an intersection influence area. And one of the things that we have built through the code changes to make sure that no lot would be denied any access. And so if they are completely within that intersection influence area, they would be allowed one access of minimum width and it would be a, a, what we call a restricted access. It would be like a right in, right out, or if it's a one way going the opposite direction, you'd have a left in, left out um, if needed. The other thing that is new in the code is the spacing requirements that on the arterial major collector, we now have spacing standards. And in this example where you have the um, uh, major arterial and the minor arterial, they're different spacing widths. And if you look at the two that are listed here on section two, it's 200 feet on West 11th and it's 150 feet on Seneca, which is the minor arterial. This is not within your own property. You would look at adjacent and what we're trying to do is reduce the number of conflict points on the arterial and major collectors and also separate those conflicts points. So the 200 feet, and if you were looking at um, the AC1 on this sample, we would look to the west, and our goal is to have 200 feet separating those. We do allow a reduction up to 50% if you do a right in, right out, so that you are restricting the access, limiting the number of conflict points, because it isn't just um, going in on your lane of 
um, it, it's both directions. It, so there's multiple conflict points. So we can cut some of the conflict points by eliminating the left in and the crossing over of traffic there. Okay. Um, and I think the um, 7.420 is the only area of the code that would deny or condition approval of any land use application or building permit. The other portions, you're going to have two hearings tonight. Mm -hmm. So you have one that's just land use, the, and that 7.420 is part of that. And then the 7. Point, or the rest of Chapter 7 issues are just design and construction um, requirements. So the other thing that you see on this application is AC2 is very close to the intersection. That one would be um, targeted for closure completely. But AC3 meets all of the new code criteria. AC1 um, would have a right out, right in requirement. Thank you. And actually, thank you very much for responding to our request and bringing these. And I, I um, would also like to ask, are these going to be up on the website? Yes, like, we can so those on the website. People who might have some curiosity can find them and see them and use them. So thank you very much for that. Hmm? Well, the other two are very similar. Uh, I think that I'm hoping that maybe you could follow through that, unless you want me to explain that. Yes. She wants you to go, go through the other two. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so the uniqueness to the next one, this industrial site, example B, the uniqueness to this is that the code is written around development sites. A development site is not a discrete, discrete little lot. So these parcels that are highlighted here all are all under one ownership and they become a development site and so as we apply the code it would apply to the group of lots here each lot here would not get an access it would be a combined review okay, okay. And, but otherwise we would look at the intersection influence area make sure that they were outside of that area, then we would look at the spacing. And if you look at the spacing of AC1 and the one to the south, there isn't um, uh, 150 feet, you're sh just shy of that. So that one would be limited to a right in, right out. Now with the new develop, this is undeveloped site, so they could actually move that farther north, get the separation, get full unrestricted access in and out. Otherwise, the um, process is just the same as what I ex explained with the first one. And that was the second one. The third one is? The third one is um, a residential site. Now, this one, uh, I put it up there. Again, it's four different sites. It's a development site. It's individually, you could sell any of those lots today. And as it's sold, it would have access individually. But if they were to come in for a land use application, um, and in most cases, what you would see here is a partition, probably a subdivision, because you'd have more than four lots. We would allow access on Coburg Road only to the very north, but not in the in intersection influence area. And El Elysium is a local street, and that's existing code. We didn't make any changes to that. But most of the access would be taken off of Elysium, not on Cobra. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. And so, um, Councilor Poling? Councilor Poling? Sorry. Um, in the materials, we were also handed a letter by, uh, written by James Hanks, President of JRH Transportation Engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had time to really digest this, but they're making reference, uh, he's making reference to the width of the driveways, the flares. Um, 
in what he's describing, is that similar to the driveways that they put in where the TJ Maxx is there at Coburg Road, just uh, north of Oakway and right directly across the street into the Oakway Center? Uh, no. Uh, I don't believe we have any driveways like he's proposing here. And when he, we talked several weeks ago about this, and this is the access connection itself, where it's wider at the street and then it narrows down. What you see at um, Coburg is actually the flares of the curb where it goes from the, the bottom of the access connection and then it goes up to six inches uh -huh. and then it flares in like that. So it's, there's that little difference there where it's in the flat area, it's going to be wider at the curb line uh -huh. and then narrows at the property line. Okay. In addition to having the flares of the curbs, okay? Because I know for, for a fact, and I see it every single day, people are constantly dropping a back wheel off the raised portion of the curb because the flare on those, both those intersections is very short and the width of those driveways is very narrow. Mm -hmm. And if you have two cars waiting to come out of Oakway Mall and one trying to turn in, I mean, you have inches to spare. So yeah, I was trying to figure out if this is what he was referring to, that situation. This would uh, improve that situation. Great. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. And, and we, um, we do agree with some of what he says for the commercial side of it. It's not necessarily needed for the residential, but we can definitely see cases for this. And as we prepare for the action item, we will give you our response on this. And okay, so down to the last paragraph of his letter, it says, unfortunately, the current language of the code would prohibit this extra curb width. No change would be made. Um, and then he says, he recommends that the city council direct the staff to revise the wording of the ordinance to permit these wider driveway flares. And that's what you're going to bring back to us? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For commercial. Thank you. Councilor Pryor. Uh, thank you. I, I agree on commercial properties. I'd love, I'd love to see that because um, I, I bump on that one all the time myself. Um, I also was looking at the committee, uh, the group that studied this, uh, a very impressive group in terms of their diversity. Was it fairly, um, was there a fair amount of consensus in terms of their, the conclusions they reached? Did they tend to be in agreement or did they tend to be kind of all over the place? Well, that's a odd question to answer it depended on what we were talking about okay um, they were very clear about what they liked and didn't like and there were some things they were very very well together with it and understood it um, I think that Alan Evans went away with one item and I can't even tell you what that was now um, that he didn't necessarily um, want to agree with it, but he didn't oppose it either. He'd like to see something different, but what it was, it wasn't. So it was kind of that kind of a discussion. We had a great group, and uh, they were very comfortable working through the details, giving us suggestions. Uh, we made a lot of changes based on what they were giving us. and. One of the things was the spacing and the intersection influence areas. In the literature and in the calculations, they actually look at how to um, make those distances. It's double. And we found that it just didn't work for Eugene. In a developed area, it's, it's very large. And um, so we ended up just cutting them all in half and looked at just that perception area, being able to make the stopping time it seemed like both of them and that seemed to be a good balance for the group is that so it, it, i can imagine with this group <laughs> that the, you may have had a lot of lively discussion around some of these topics but was it your sense that anybody left the room when it was all done really unhappy with the outcome or pretty much they could live with it no uh -uh. I okay don't say that at all okay that's that that's good to hear um the second item is uh on the first page here, I, I use these all the time. Um, I go to Blockbuster to drop off videos all the time. And I use AC1 almost exclusively because I'm headed eastbound. And that is, so I understand exactly where you're going and why, why you're doing that. 
But the second point then is, as you begin to go through this access management process, something that's always been of great interest to me is as you remove access from the main thoroughfare or limit access on the main thoroughfare, you need to compensate by adding additional access between the commercial properties off the main road. The example being, if you want to go from the Fred Meyer on West 11th to the Lowe's on West 11th, for many years when it was a Shopco, you couldn't get from one to the other without having to go out on West 11th to come back in. That seemed incredibly inefficient to me. And they've now put an actual access between the two buildings so you don't have to go on West 11th to get there. That's an example of what I hope would become more of the trend in thinking how you can control access on a major thoroughfare but still facilitate the interaction between commercial properties, particularly when we start thinking about transportation improvements on West 11th, an issue that I've been working on for quite a while. And one of the discussion items was how can we improve intercommercial access without having to keep coming onto the main road. So I guess what I'm saying is as you go through this, I like if there's a trend to also be able to provide intercommercial access as part of this, I think that would be a, a tremendous addition to the to the discussion. And that's the advantage of um, example B, where you have multiple lots under one ownership, where you have the ability to work it all together as a development site, but once it leaves that, that person's hand, as you do a land use application, you can't put a condition based on somebody else's um, ability right. to solve it. And, but it's over time that we can develop this. And as long as we have this development site where it's anything that's under one ownership, yes, we do Great. It Thank that. you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have two public hearings here. And the first one is on um, this um, amending sections 9.0500, 9.550, and 7.420 of the Eugene City Code and adding sections 9.6703, and 976873 of that code. And I open the hearing, and there's no one here. I close that hearing, and that one's done. And the second one. Could you, re could you repeat that? Could you restate and, the motion? And, and the second one <laughs> is <laughs> amending se section 7.010, 7.085, 7.290, 7.297, 7.298, 7.299, 7.300, 7.301, 7.302, 7.303, 7.304, 7.305, 7.306, 7.307, 7.308, 7.309, 7.310, 7.311, 7.312, 7.313, 7.314, 7.315, 7.316, 7.317, 7.318, 7.319, 7.320, 7.321, 7.322, 7.323, 7.324, 7.325, 7.326, 7.327, 7.328, 7.329, 7.330, 7.331, 7.332, 7.333, 7.334, 7.335, 7.336, 7.337, 7.338, 7.339, 7.440, 7.441, 7.442, 7.443, 7.444, 7.445, 7.446, 7.447, 7.448, 7.449, 7.450, 7.451, 7.452, 7.453, 7.454, 7.455, 7.456, 7.457, 7.458, 7.459, 7.460, 7.471, 7.472, 7.473, 7.474, 7.475, 7.476, 7.478, 7.479, 7.480, 7.481, 7.482, 7.483, 7.484, 7.485, 7.486, 7.487, 7.488, 7.489, 7.490, 7.491, 7.492, 7.493, 7.494, 7.495, 7.496, 7.497, 7.498, 7.499, 7.500, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.556, 7.557, 7.558, 7.559, 7.560, 7.570, 7.571, 7.572, 7.573, 7.574, 7.575, 7.576, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.556, 7.557, 7.558, 7.559, 7.560, 7.570, 7.571, 7.572, 7.573, 7.574, 7.575, 7.576, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550, 7.551, 7.552, 7.553, 7.554, 7.555, 7.566, 7.577, 7.578, 7.579, 7.580, 7.581, 7.582, 7.583, 7.584, 7.585, 7.596, 7.597, 7.598, 7.599, 7.510, 7.511, 7.512, 7.513, 7.514, 7.515, 7.516, 7.517, 7.518, 7.519, 7.520, 7.521, 7.522, 7.523, 7.524, 7.525, 7.526, 7.527, 7.528, 7.529, 7.530, 7.531, 7.532, 7.533, 7.534, 7.535, 7.536, 7.537, 7.538, 7.539, 7.540, 7.541, 7.542, 7.543, 7.544, 7.545, 7.546, 7.547, 7.548, 7.549, 7.550,
Be uh, Councilor Taylor? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I don't even show her. Okay. Oh. Councilor Ortiz. She's Lincoln. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I do think that I, you know, I hear a couple of comments from my peers, and I do think um, if there is time, if we could have like a, like one of those little 15-minute lightning rod um, overviews um, on our agenda between now and the time that they're going to actually move just to get caught up and Just getting started now, so. Oh, okay, they're just getting started. But they're getting of, started on some fairly um, important processes, so that's why t the timeliness it's not that they're going to conclude anytime soon, but it's that they are beginning heading down some roads, I guess. Is that the fair way to put it, city manager? And so if you want to kind of get in at the front end, now is the time. Or if you want to wait to the back end, you have other options. Well, I guess what I would like to do is just have a platform to discuss what our thoughts are. And it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. anything, any more work. Um, than what you've already done, it just to, if you put time on the agenda so we can just kind of have like a round robin of discussion of what our desires are and if anything comes from that, or I can do it by email too if we want to vote on it. I just I just feel like it's a, it's a big enough issue where, uh, and there's constituencies out there that are really interested in keeping it and I, and I kind of want to be able to articulate our challenges as an organization on uh, participating in that conversation. Councilor Taylor. Thank you. Um, if there's anything that we as a city can do about this, I think we should do it. And if they've, I'd, li I'd be interested in this discussion on what kind of power we have, if any. Thank you. Anybody else want to? Um, so what I'm going to suggest, uh, having uh, heard and, and not heard, is um, that uh, why don't you put out a poll okay. for and then see what kind of response we get and then we'll move. Okay? All right. Thank you all very much.